Wow. I'm lucky. I'm blessed, really, because we had a great video last one we did, and we decided the heck with it. Let's just keep going, right? <laughs> Let's just keep going. Let's do another one. This is A, great conversation. B, honestly, our schedules are so screwy. When do we get a chance to actually sit down like a couple of adult men and have a conversation, right? Uh, most of the time, I'm tossing babies. Yeah, well, you, yeah, like I say, you collected them. Yeah. You collect them like they're like Pokemon or something, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah usually, I'm, um, most of my conversations consist of poop and who's pooping and how they're pooping. Yeah, well, <laughs> luckily for us, we're not going to have to talk about that today. Just did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you brought up something in our last conversation that I wanted to talk about a little bit. Okay. Bivocational ministers. We both have full time jobs, mm -hmm. probably more than full time. Mm -hmm. Yet at the same time, we're both on boards or founders or responsible for many different aspects of growing busy ministries. Yeah. I consider myself a full time truck driver, but I'm also part of a full time ministry. And, and I the same, right? I consider myself to be a, a full-time service manager, but I'm also a full-time minister, right? Because we have, I, I do, I, we were talking about this kind of in our little private time a little while ago, right? Like I am beyond blown away by how God has moved in the ministry that he has assigned to my wife and I, and the ministry that we get to, uh, uh, witness with you guys and right it's, it just blows my mind that he takes a couple of right the word says that god will use the unwise to confound the wise and he will use the uneducated to confound the educated right and i feel like that that's me a lot of times it's like he has chosen this guy tattoo on the neck bald head beard hanging off my face right to minister to people in in many many different settings so how do we balance our lives? Like, how does that happen? Is it anything for you outside of literal divine intervention to make time for all this to happen? Or, or have you found a way to strike a real good ministry slash life slash work slash family balance? Um, That's a good one, right? I put you on that the That is really good. One. And it, it really just does put you on the spot but i i honestly have i have a few different answers to it. do it um a number one number one i gotta thank is my wife mm -hmm. my wife is the best supporter that i have um she is the you know it, it really true it is a true statement um if you know, happy wife, happy life. Mm. But it's also like behind every great man is a great woman. Oh, yeah. You know, if it wasn't for my wife uh, supporting me in the ministries that I do and and knowing that it is and knowing that that I have the capabilities and and feeling that I can and I am helping people yeah. like if she didn't back me. Yeah. and support me oh, and i it would i, I would I, there's no way i would be yep. doing any of this big time bro. none of it yep um yep. so that's that's a number one um two is really it's it's god ordained everything falls in line yeah it's if it, if it's not if it's not god god's not gonna let it happen i mean i shouldn't say that He's got to let some some stuff happen, but right, but if you do it in your own strength, you're gonna. If I do it in my own strength. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah I, I yep. would be. I, I, again, I'd be fighting with myself, and there's so many, so many times where it's like, well, if God wants that to happen, then He's gonna allow that to happen. Yep. Because I have all of this scheduled, and I have this amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and I have more schedule than time. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, if I, I allow myself to get booked out for two months, 
once it gets once that two month hits that's yeah then i read it, it and, and i'm also trying to finish my next level degree at the mm -hmm. same time online so i'm i'm blessed to be able to do that at liberty university online right work family and and much like you bro it you know god created our wives for us for an incredibly specific purpose and, and that's what kind of drives me crazy about i hear all this stuff like women need to be equal to men and all this other stuff no i don't want to be equal with you no you have a completely different job than i have i can't do your job my wife does things sometimes i swear she's like superhuman bro like not only did she have three children and if you've seen my son <laughs> right my, <laughs> not only did she have three children she's kept me in line she's kept me in check and lifted me up That's right one. i am the biggest self-doubter you'll ever meet by far i can get up and stand in front of 500 people i've done it 4,000 people. I stood in front of 4,000 people and gave a message, came off and looked at my wife, went, oh, my God, I'm going to go in the back right now and go throw up because I, that was just the worst thing. That, and it doesn't <laughs> matter if it's 4,000 people or just you and me. Like, I'll go in the house after meeting with someone and having a conversation. Go, oh, my God, babe, you don't even understand. That was the worst thing ever. And she'd be like, stop, blah, blah, blah. And she'll just lift me right back up. And remind me of the things that god has done through us and our family and our ministries and so i get that yeah she's she's definitely um like i'm my worst critic mm -hmm. you know and she's my biggest support yeah so it's like and that's not a coincidence that god put those no, two people together no we're, and we're polar polar opposites too like there's <laughs> both, uh, on most things yeah, polar, yeah. <laughs> um I thought she didn't like me at first. I thought she didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, she's just that she's she's quiet when when you first meet her, right? Yeah. So at first, I'm like, oh my god, this woman is secretly plotting how to kill me. You can keep this. She has resting beach bitch face. <laughs> <laughs> she knows it too. She's like, um, how come they don't? How come, how come they don't talk to me? I was like, because you look like you want to kill him. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, you totally yeah. Yep. I interrupted her last night interview too. She was outside talking to somebody and I started talking. I didn't realize she was talking. And I went, Oh my god, I'm so sorry, because I was like, She's gonna rip my face off. This is yeah. gonna be right. And she's like, Oh no, it's totally cool. Yeah. We went on and had this great conversation. <laughs> at first I didn't think she liked me at all. Right. Uh it's it, it she gets at a lot, you know, and uh Cindy does too. Savannah is she's something else man and it's funny because like once you break through that yeah it's like she doesn't shut up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we when we were out in oklahoma cindy used to literally have to explain to people i'm not angry and i don't hate you it's just how i talk and how i am right like she's she's only this big right but, but she's got this presence about her and people get thrown off all the time it's pretty funny actually but i think it's i can honestly say the same thing with cindy though she when once you get past that She's she's a doll. You can't. Yeah. Not that not that she can't st stop talking, but she's she's uh, <laughs> you, you know, it's like oh, once you get past that, it's like okay, we're good. Right. It's right. Like, okay. <laughs> so so work life family ministry balance. Right. I call it God family work club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. You know. Awesome. I love it. Can you think of a time? I'm gonna really put you on the spot. All right, because I'm going to put myself on the spot, too, because I don't necessarily know the answer to this right off. So I'm going to ask you first. And while you're scrambling, I'm going to think of my answer. Um, can Great. you can you think of a time where. God slash ministry preempted literally everything else that was going on in your life, like God went pause. I need you to handle this. And you had to go and handle something. Yeah. Um, let's see. I can think of two times well off the top of my head. Uh, oh, one time, it was a, a friend of mine. He had a problem with his bike, and he was stuck. And um, it was like, does that fit? I mean, the yeah. guy was stuck, and I could have been like, 
you know what? I got stuff going on here and passed it all passed it along to the next guy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I felt like that's what I needed to do. Right. You know? Yeah. I could have just passed the guy and just Yeah. You know? Yep. Yep. But uh there was a guy he needed need help. And he had uh he was stuck. So I ended up it was like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was actually on my way home from work and I'm like, I'm just exhausted. Yeah. But I ended up helping helping the guy, picked him up, brought him home, grabbed his trailer, loaded his bike, got him got him back to where he needed to be. That's awesome. Give him, you know, he was connected through club. Mm. Like he wasn't part of my club, but we were connected. Yeah, yeah. And I ended up handing him a biker church card. That's and, awesome. You know, that was when it and it was through ministry. Yeah. You know, yeah, it was yeah. like, yeah, gotta help this guy. He needs help. He's stuck. Like, can we help him? Yeah, we can help him. I'll get him. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. I I I have a couple of that I thought of while you were talking. I remember at one point Cindy and I were headed somewhere to go do something together. And we got contacted by someone who needed help. And it was in November. It was cold. It was raining. It was really just a cruddy day. And I was only had on like some little zip up hooded sweatshirt with like a t-shirt under it, jeans. And I ended up standing in a Wawa parking lot for about two and a half hours, like 11 o'clock to one o'clock at PM to AM ministering to this guy who needed it at that moment, never got done what we needed to get done, never got done where we needed to go, but we managed and I froze my tail off. And and it literally reminded me of exactly how I got ministered to when it happened to me initially in the first place. And that was that was an amazing opportunity. But one that really has 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 struck me and we started talking about this a little earlier. I recently lost someone in my family. Mm someone who was pretty important to me and I was on my way to see this person in the hospital and I had this overwhelming sense that this was going to be goodbye right like it was a family member so I was with other family members right and you say well how does that fit into the conversation because at that point I had to switch out of Jamie the family member to Jamie, the minister of the family. Right. And there was pain, right? Like, listen, when someone leaves this earth, even though we know they're headed to where they're headed, and even though we know what what glory awaits them, it hurts us in the process. So, of course, there's hurt. But at the same time, having the ability to be there and minister to the people directly related to me, incredibly close direct family, at the time when they needed it the absolute most in their life was probably one of the greatest honors God's ever bestowed on me in my life. Paused my life to handle this, which was actually a part of my life, and then resumed my life again. It was a strange situation. It really was, but it was one that that I'm glad I had the opportunity to be there for and to be able to do it. So it was it was really good. So we've gotten family, job, work, blah, 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 blah. We've gotten interruptions to everything else to serve God, which is there a higher calling? Uh, that's, I mean, you think about it, is it, is it really an interruption or is right. that just, you know, cause ultimately that's really what, what, what we're called to do. Right. Um, I like how in, in your perspective, not your perspective, but the story that I, I don't want to call it a story, but your situation, that's it. In your situation, it was about ministering. And for mine, it was about serving. Being there. You know? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's like both of those and both of those are ministering. And both of those, sure. not only that, but they're both worshiping. When we're doing that, we're worshiping. Man, 
you just triggered a conversation. <laughs> so I said to you, I, I had a, a talk with a very good friend last night. One of the things we talked about was worship. He's directly involved with that world. Mm -hmm. And I said, I got to be honest with you, bro, with everything that's going on within the church, the church globally, right? There's right. One of the big worship churches on the planet is having a, a catastrophic meltdown right now because of things that have happened in the natural. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, right? The one in Australia. Oh, I thought you were talking about the Will Smith. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so many believers, especially modern believers, have tied themselves to this particular ministry and yeah. their quote unquote worship style that it's starting to affect the church globally because how can this happen to this church that made this beautiful worship music and so on and so on and so forth i'll keep my opinions about that over here but my point was my worship is so much less about me standing or singing and lifting my hands than it is worshiping god in my service to other people, to his people, worshiping God in my service to my family, worshiping God by constantly giving him the glory for every single thing that happens and, and that, that I get to do in my life. So you brought that up. Let's talk about that for a second. You said that is a form of your worship. Right. Like uh, less and less as I get older, do I really. Um, Don't talk about that older stuff. I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's less and less about um music right. uh in general like we can talk about that forever what kind of music we should listen to and yada 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 we can talk about that for hours but worshiping what i worship and glorify god through my the things that i do and the way that i manage my mouth yeah oh um and way that also then manage, I mean, what's it? Second Timothy three, uh, like it tells you, you know, how we're supposed to basically run our lives as, yeah. as leaders, yeah. you know, what, what, so me, I worship the father by the way that I manage my household. Big time. You know, Big I time. worship the father by yeah. the way that I um, do my job and, you know, sometimes it's imperfect, but I do do the best, you know. You, you know, listen, it's crazy, right? If you if you really went back 20 something years in my life and started doing some digging, I've done some messed up stuff. Cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Anybody who wanted to smear my name or smear Living Acts 29 Ministries because of something that I did 20 years ago would be would be able to find it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, same, and I don't hide thing. from that. Oh, 100 uh, percent. I mean. I thank God every day that, that cell phones weren't a big thing when we were young. Thank God there was no social media. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. If YouTube was around back then, they'd be making a channel just about the stupid stuff. Oh, my God. Thing. Please, bro. Please. But what's it about? Is it about the things that I did before then? Or is it about the worship in my life that I've done since then? Right? And you brought up a really good point. Our homes, especially. Yeah. The first... the, the, the Our... Our first ministry should ultimately be our, our family. Yeah. We should, I mean, we can't be leaders of any other ministry before without it. What, I wish I had it in, but it's how can you serve, how can you lead the family of Christ if you can't, can't even keep your own household, keep your own family. household in order? Yeah. Yeah, no, 100%. And because I know your family, right? Uh, your daughter is a, is a bright, articulate young lady who has conversations with my daughter all the time. And I hear them talking about the things of God, right? right? Yep. They didn't get that from TV. No. Right? Or they watching YouTube. Right. Or, they didn't or... <laughs> get that from video games. Right. So that, that example in our homes, first and foremost, right? How many ministers kids do you and i know we could probably name a lot of the same ones who who hate ministry or who hate god now because they were beaten into it maybe physically <laughs> or, or they think of it as like a financial outlet right like i don't know how else to make money other than spread the word of the gospel mm -hmm. which is just sick um yeah that's a true twisting of, of what it's that like 
you know, selling selling Jesus to people, Jesus isn't for sale. You no. know, God, he's not a product. No, he's not a product, no. right? And that drives me. That drives me absolutely insane. I can't tell you how much that that that. One of the things that I've said over and over, people have probably heard me say it a bazillion times at this point, is Jesus is not a product. You can't sell the gospel, right? Look at what happened to the, the magician who asked the apostles to lay hands on him and give him the power of the Holy Spirit so that he could continue to do his job after they, and what happened to him, right? It didn't work out really well for him in the, in the Bible. How, is, how do we think it's going to work out any better for any of the rest of us? If God dumped every bit of his wrath and anger on his son, why is it that he thinks he's going to let us slide? Or why is it that we think he's going to let us slide, right? Um, that just that just infuriates me. So so talking about managing our families and, and, and ministering to our families, right? Um, we, we have friends who their wives have women's Bible studies. Right. Right? My wife runs a... a vibrant women's discussion group uh where, where they virtually right they don't have to get together they right, right. virtually have this this your wife is very active in causes right they didn't get that on their own so when we talk about ministry life family it wears off mm -hmm. it wears off onto the people that that we are responsible for and that's the thing god has say he used to say something i'm sorry no go ahead uh when I, I talked about earlier it might have been a different video when we were um first getting into ministry or first realizing like i need to bring the gospel out more or you know uh I was ha still hanging out with with people on the outside. Yeah, you know, and uh, I ha used to say like I'm sorry, like sorry, but I leak, mm. you know, because yeah. yep. At that point in time, and and I'm I'm actually going to talk about something else, but yeah, um, like I said, that point in time, I was just getting on fire for, for, for Christ. So every time I did anything and I still, that's one thing that I can still say now, anything on time I do anything, I ask God what I'm doing first, Yeah, you know, yeah. and ultimately God's in everything that we do. And that's how it's supposed to be. Of course. Yep. But as a new believer, I used to say that I leaked, but really now I, I talk about it, um, striking a match. And when, as a new believer, even uh, using the, the motorcycle club aspect, when you first join or try and get into a motorcycle ministry or motorcycle club, you're on fire and you're lighting that match. When you light that match, you like when you light a match, it goes like really big. And then it comes down and then you find that slow burn, right? And then you find find that just that sweet spot where it just stays and it stays lit. Right. And that's where we got to find ourselves. And the same thing in, in the the club life and same thing is is in ministry life is we flame up, we get really big and then we got to come and find that spot where we just we just burn. Yeah. And. Um, yeah, that's that's good. That's really how how I describe that. That's good. Yeah, it's. um. It's amazing how many people have a, a longer bit of a initial flash, right, and then disappear. Sam, yeah, how many times have you lit a match and it goes shh, and then it's out? Yeah, yeah, but right. okay. yeah, there gets too much air or not enough. Yeah, and it, it that's the same same thing in ministry. How many times have we seen people right. come in and they're completely on fire for God, and then? I hate to say this, but somebody dies or yeah, yeah. Um, somebody turns or, or God, you know, uh, the church does something wrong, mm -hmm. isn't there for them at a certain time, mm -hmm. which, you know, you can you can take it either way. It's either the church did it or it's really like a lot of times we we blame God for things that man does. It's a it's a perceived slight. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's funny. I call it the bottle rocket effect, right? Mm-hmm. Bang, and then it's over. And it's over and done with, right? Right. right? Versus your match where you find that sustained burn, that slow burn, and the, the, the bottle rocket just, and it's bright, and it's, oh, look, it's going, it's going, and it has this beautiful display, and then it's like, it's gone. It's, it's like it, 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 it instantly. And I can think of a couple of ministries that the local, like uh, not locally, rather global style, global sized ministries where things like that have happened. I can think of one that in Oklahoma took off like a rocket, actually had quite a big display and then something happened and he was Close gone. Doors. Yeah. Like overnight. And, and people are left going, now what? If God was in this ministry and I've been in this ministry for all these years and God was in this ministry, how could something like this just happen? And now what do I do? Where am I left? What, right? I, 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 we were talking about our families. I saw an article yesterday about gender and sex education at a <laughs> low level grade. Okay. Right? And I put it on Facebook. I'm not even gonna lie. I was I put it on Facebook. I was a little disappointed about it. And I said, if you are a born again believer in Christ, how can you possibly send the children that God has given us to steward to Caesar's palace to get educated? The point was not the education. The point was people lose sight of the fact that God let you create these little beings. Mm -hmm. right but he gave them to you to steward them not to have them as trophies or right we're supposed to we're supposed to steward them and then when i get to the point where they're old enough to decide that they want to become believers in christ they're no longer just our children they're actually now brothers and sisters in christ and that's why the family is so important that's why that that nucleus is so important and it goes right to what we're talking about with these churches right when a church like that just shuts down and there's no nucleus all of a sudden people are just lost and they're floating about now and they're they're following um any wind of doctrine that seems to catch their eye at the moment and the next thing you know they're watching sermons with people spitting in their hands and slapping in other people's faces right like all right that was a little bit of a shot at at the ministry but you know or kicks them in the stomach right yeah i get it like it's funny because I okay. Sorry, <laughs> just <stuck message. laughs> okay. It just flash red at me. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna circle it around a little. Yeah, bit. yeah. Sometimes those ministries do have things in it where it gets you where you need to go, and uh, it's like a, a Smith with Wigglesworth, right? Right. Yeah. So the one quote that I do love was I I only pray five minutes at a time, but I never go five minutes without praying. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So there are still good stuff, sure. you know. Sure. Um because I don't really agree with it to him anymore. I used to Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Once you learn really uh, I, I yeah, used yeah. to it, it's funny because like there was a time where that was the that was the I mean, I think we could both say it was uh, was it you as well? I mean, yeah, I know was a, that was a benchmark for me. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. for me, that was you know, Smith Wigglesworth was a big deal. You yeah, know? it yep. was uh, um, you know, reading reading his books and stuff like that. I mm-hmm. I really identified with that until I grew up and realized, oh my gosh, this is not how it's supposed to be. I'm so glad you said that because <laughs> you know, right now we're so as a society we're so politically correct and woke that we don't want to even follow simple biblical doctrine we have global ministries who have global reach in their online presence and their video presence and so on and so forth yet they're spewing falsehood and they're spewing just these vitriolic things but at the same time, there's people going, oh, yeah, but I got saved listening to that guy or. Yeah. And it's it's a hard line for me, especially. Right? It's like, did you did you get saved? Doing right. That? 
Exactly. Um, so people will, I'm going to just bring up one name. Okay. It's a global, so I'm not really targeting, but Joel Osteen. Okay. People will go, Joel Osteen's great. He tells great stories. He makes me feel so good about myself. And I'll even hear Christians say tons and tons of people get saved in his church. He's bringing people to the kingdom. And I'll argue, A, are they even really saved or did they just do the magic prayer thing? And B, if they're saved, why are they still there? What are they doing with it? Mm -hmm. Right? Goes back to what we talked about in the last video about the fruit. People will just blindly say, I follow Jesus. I'm, I'm a Christian because I listen to Joel Osteen. Yeah, that's not the case. Um, you, we're not, but that also goes back to the saying where, um, all right. So I'm a Christian because I listen to Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen didn't come to earth to get crucified on a cross. Right. Right. <laughs> right? Joel Osteen, I mean, maybe he should have. Oh, oh, <laughs> but Joel Osteen doesn't connect us to God. Christ does. The Bible does. Correct. You know? There's only one media. And it honestly, but you really think about it. It's, honestly, it's been the beginning of time that there's been that fight where, mm -hmm. I mean, it, definitely in America. You oh, think yeah. about yeah. Americans came to, uh, I mean, well, the pilgrims came came to America to escape England because England was religious persecution, religion. right? Yeah. So, because they had Bibles and they couldn't, there's people that couldn't even read the Bible. You had to get it read to you by mm -hmm. somebody else, yeah. you know. And that's ultimately that's pretty much what happens now. I mean, you you can't get. You, you know, okay, I, I'm a Christian because, or no, I'm going to heaven because I'm part of the Catholic Church. You know, I could talk about that all day. Oh, uh, yeah, me too. But, um, you know, I went to Catholic school. Sorry. Basically, my whole life. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get me started. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I know the point you're making because I've said this a thousand times, right? William Tyndale was burned at the stake, executed by the Roman Church. For translating the Bible into the common language so people could read it for themselves. And you could say the for many different reasons. Listen, the Roman church killed them because if people understood what was in the Bible, they would lose their grip on people. <laughs> Period. Point blank. Mm -hmm. But he would literally be rolling in his grave today if he knew that I have. It's recording us right now. This little thing that I carry around in my pocket that has more computing power than the first three space shuttles had <laughs> yeah right and i have access on this device to 25 different translations of the bible That's probably an understatement for yeah. free for mm -hmm. free but yet i choose my time on facebook or instagram or youtube or anything else rather than saturating myself in the word of god he would be rolling in his grave knowing that he died to be able to bring the bible into the common language and those of us who understand the common language don't even have any interest in it that's a tough one, man. Because it's like as you're speaking, I'm feeling guilty. We I all should listen. I, I, I can't, me too. I can't honestly tell you. I, I can. I can't honestly tell you how many times I've done that. But I can tell you this: just when, like, okay, I, 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 I guess preached. We, we'll say on on Saturday. You know, it was Thursday that I was sitting down to write what I'm going to talk about, and. Um, going through you version, we're talking about you version, yeah, sure, right? Um, and then all of a sudden, like a, an alert comes up, you know, eBay purchase, right? <laughs> or, or, um, squirrel, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or Yogi Cycle Service has a new uh episode on, <laughs> on or Vice Care Garage has a new episode yeah. on YouTube, or um. You know, you have a message from XYZ on Facebook, yep. and it's like, man, I'm just trying to. And then, needless to say, I wrote I wrote it on Friday instead of Thursday. <laughs> Listen, we're all guilty, right? Every single one of us. And if any one of us says that we're not, you're a liar. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, you're a liar. You're an absolute liar, right? right? None of us, especially what we started this conversation with. We have full lives, husbands, mm -hmm. fathers, employees ministers right we have full lives so for us to say no, no no no, i dedicated eight hours today to looking at the bible i didn't look at facebook i didn't take any text you're a liar 
Yeah. Let's I mean, just get that out of the way. But how much time did you actually devote to it? That's the question, right? You know, I was talking again. I was talking to a friend of mine last night. I am a podcast guy. Mm-hmm. Podcasts and videos. When I get it, I'm sitting in the car that I drive to work every single day, right? I hook up my Bluetooth and I put something on that's a half, I have a half an hour drive to work every day. And I put something on that's like a 28 minute podcast, maybe a 32 minute podcast, and I'll do 55 instead of doing 65 on the way to work, right? Right. And I feed myself every single morning. And I like to say I do it on the way home too, but sometimes it ends up being the radio or it ends up being one of my little guilty pleasures, uh, 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 a podcast, a guy that tells these strange, dark and mysterious stories, right? Because I mm-hmm. like murder or I right. like mystery stories, you know? And the next thing you know, this has now, it's like it's like sitting in front of the TV with Netflix on. You end up watching 73 episodes of something in a row because you've completely gotten sucked in and you lost track of time, right? right? So we're all guilty of it. <coughs> but we have this information we have everything in the, the, the palm of our hands at the, the tip of our fingers and those of us especially who consider ourselves ministers of the word mm-hmm. yeah i mean <coughs> i'm a truck driver i drive a truck i'm constantly just driving right so Thank God that, that I have that app where I can just have it downloaded. You have an opportunity. You can download whatever version you like. And I'm not one of those guys that say King James Version and only the King James right. Version. Like, there's a lot of people out there that are like, we actually have, um, I wanted to say we actually have, but I know a guy in another club and his name is Kajo for King James only. But, you know, Kajo. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> there's, there's dudes like that, and I'm not one of those guys. I think the most important, um, the most important version is the one that you're reading. I, I can agree with that, ninety five percent. Yeah, yeah, because I, I'm not a King James only guy. As a matter of fact, I don't read King James most of the time. Most of the time, I read the complete Jewish Bible, or right. But I do believe that there are some translations that you just need to stay that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can understand that. There's. I'm not going to get into it right now, right? Like that's another. Right. There's, there is, there is definitely a couple out there that are. uh, See, when I, when I try, usually when I write something or if I'm trying to do something, um, I usually have a few different versions. Yeah, sure. But for me, uh, NLT version is the version that I usually use. NLT is good, yeah, and, it, and I think they're pretty standard, and I and I've used it in uh, conglomeration mm. with you know with a couple of different versions, yeah, and it seems to hold true and steady. So I'll take whatever chapter book that I'm reading that week, and I'll just I have the NLT downloaded onto my phone, and I press play. Um, but also, like you said. And I can't remember if that was the other recording or not, but um, it's. I also attend two different Bible studies every week. Right. You know, right, where right. I'm getting uh getting fed because I can't do anything. I can't feed anybody unless I'm getting fed. Right. You know, right. I yeah. I can't I can't bring the word or talk. I have no room to talk to anybody if I don't study myself. Yeah. So, it's, what's what's the Bible says to study to show yourself approved, mm-hmm. right? It doesn't say you'll be able to speak every time you open your mouth because God's just going to dump stuff into you. That's not what it says. You have to spend time in it to be able to, to, mm-hmm. to talk about it, right? And in fact, it says uh, to spend time in it is so much that it's on your heart, that it's written on your right. heart. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let this word be in your mouth and in your heart. And Yeah, right. absolutely. My, the other thing that, see, see something that really irritated me, I remember being in a church one time and there was a uh, worship person who had the microphone, who read out of a translation of the Bible that I would not have read from in a church mm-hmm. 
It's not even a translation. It's a paraphrase of the Bible. And followed it up with, it really doesn't, because I guess some people must have groaned or something. And this person said, it really doesn't matter what version of the Bible you're reading as long as you're reading the Bible. And I took exception to that. And I grabbed that person after service and said, listen, do you mind if I talk to you for a second about something? Blah, 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 blah. And when I brought it up, they basically said to me, well, you can, you can agree to disagree. And I went, well, well no, I can't. Mm. Because the word clearly says X, Y, Z. And your, the, the word says to write the, the, the words of this law on your heart. Mm. The word says to, if you add one word or subtract one word from this accumulated word, it would be better that you weren't born. So it's not okay to just say, it doesn't matter. So, so what if we told people that's fine and they went out and they bought themselves a Queen James Bible? And they looked at me and said, a Queen James Bible? What are you talking about? Thing doesn't no exist. <laughs> I, said, I said, unfortunately, there's a Queen James Bible now. It's an LGBT Bible. It's a Queen. It really? Yeah. It's got, oh, the, wow. it's got the LGBT flag on the front of it. It's the Queen James translation. Look it up. There's, there's a... Uh, I'm, yeah, I've heard of stuff like that. I heard of like uh, Mother Mother God. Right. You ever right. hear that? Yep. I've so, had somebody come come to me and, and actually in a Walmart and talk to me. Have, have you ever heard? Huh? Huh? Quoting scripture, by the way. Right. Like quoting scripture pretty well and um, just manipulating it. Sure. Well, Satan can quote scripture right. better than anybody. Mm -hmm. Right. He'll twist it. Right? What did he hit Jesus with? When Jesus was yeah, tempted I in should, the desert, what did he hit him with? You're right. I, but I should, like, uh, you know, the, the most important Bible that you that you, uh, that you 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 should read is the one that you read. You know, the one the, the best interpretation is the one in your hand. I guess that's you're right. It's not exactly. I, I'm not you know, holding the, you to task by saying that no, because no, it's you didn't true. even know that one existed, right? That's but that's right. the point I was making to that worship person. You have a church full of people that you just said that to, and maybe the one kid in the back who's been dealing with same-sex attraction and is having a hard time with it, is praying about getting freed from it, and all of a sudden you go, well, just read any old Bible you want to, right. and they're going, oh, sweet, I can read the Queen James Bible and read blah, 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 right? So I'm, I'm not trying to bring any... No, no, any, that's what we're here for. Yeah, right? yeah. Discussion, right? Yeah, yeah, of I'm course. Not supposed to sit here and like everything. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that was part of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, but you know. it's no, it's it's. This is a conversation. This is how conversations go. It's like you know, I can be wrong. I can be wrong a lot. Ask my wife. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Should I go get Cindy? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and yeah, it because you. I just never considered. And it sucks that we live in a time that that we do have to consider that. Like, there's interpretations out there. Like, we got to be careful with what, what interpretation that we have. But we we're talking about Tyndale. Yeah. You know, Tyndale would be rolling over his grave if there was uh, interpretations out there like that. Right. Yeah, of course. You know, of and, course. Get, literally gave his life. And, and not only gave his life, but gave his life according to what the Bible said and said he considered it an honor and a privilege to be persecuted and to give his life for the gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, persecution. <laughs> we think we're persecuted because, uh, you know, we, we have to walk through a, a couple of protesters every now and then <laughs> or something, right? We have zero concept right. of what persecution actually is. Uh, I heard somebody one time say, just because you said the magic prayer in church <clears throat> and you think you're going to heaven, what happens when you get to heaven and the guy in front of you in line waiting to get through the gate turns around and says, how'd you get here? And you go, oh, I said a magic prayer one time at church. Why? How did you get here? And the guy looks at you and says, well, after watching my wife and daughter get raped in front of me, I, I had my skin peeled off of me and then I was set on fire. But I never gave up on God and I knew he was going to rescue me. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one. Right. <laughs> so. We have no idea what persecution actually is. We are blessed to live in, even though it's whacked out, screwed up right now. Right. It's we're definitely blessed to be in in America, yeah. but also like in the in the times that we're in, you know, 
a lot of us wouldn't be surviving if it was <laughs> true different, story. different times. True story. <laughs> yeah. True story. Um, and and I love that now we can integrate the technology that we have to be able to reach so much further than we've ever been able to reach before, right? Uh, in, in Revelation, we see the story of the two witnesses and the two witnesses are killed and come back to life. And the whole world sees it. Literally, at the entire time, at, at the exact moment, the entire world sees the two witnesses of Revelation die and then eventually come back to life. I think it's 100 days later. We are in a time right now in history that we are technologically advanced enough that something like that could literally happen mm -hmm. right now. But yet, it's raining. I don't want to go to church today because I'm going to. Yeah. Right. We're, we're, we're talking about God has been so great to us and helped us balance our work life stuff and all this. But there are so many people who call themselves believers who won't go to church because it's raining or little Bobby's got a soccer game. Right. Somebody put on Facebook the other day. I've seen it a thousand times, but they put it up the other day that church should be the reason for you to miss other things, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. so, I, mean, I used to watch a little house on the prairie when I was a kid. And every weekend, showing your age, but I remember yeah, it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you remembering it, showing you. <laughs> they would get in their little wagon and they would head to the church house, and right. Would, right? Like in the, in the in the early or the mid part of the twentieth century in this country, things closed on Sunday, right? They weren't even open on Sunday because everybody was at church, right? Uh, I, I think of of Green Bay, Wisconsin. When the Packers play, they literally close the entire city mm -hmm. because everybody's at the games, right? Yeah. It's football. Right. It's football. It's football. Uh, but we can't get more than 100 people to come into your average church on any given Sunday to worship the creator of all things. It's amazing. It really amazes me. You know, um, people will fight with you over the stupidest thing. I, I was at a I was at a party recently, or not a party, a celebration, um, and a woman kind of grabbed me and, and cornered me and was like, "I want to ask you a couple questions. You're you're a minister, right? Yeah. I want to ask you a couple questions." And the first thing out of her mouth was, "Do you believe in, in homosexual that homosexuality is a sin?" And I went. Here we go. I know what's coming. I know the arguments that are coming. I know what's going to happen. But at the same time, I knew I had to, to stay there. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had to answer the questions honestly. With love. But mm -hmm. honestly. Right? But we can't get people to come out when it's raining. I had this thought the other day, and I've seen this before, and this is something, because you mentioned the word gangs before. I hate that word. I do too, but it's, <laughs> this time it's a good example. Someone said that drug dealers and gangs do a better job of recruiting and retaining people than the Christian church does Absolutely. in America. Yep. Your average street gang it does a better job of showing what brotherhood is. Because you, I tell you what, if you're in a street gang, honestly, a street gang, sometimes it'll, it, it'll they'll even do better than a motorcycle club, you know? And that's what we're what's what a motorcycle club is supposed to be about, showing brotherhood and um being there for one another. And but a street gang, they rely on each other to 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 for everything. You know? So they they show something that I hate to say it, but it's like they have to rely on each other for for food, for work, for for you know, um, getting, being able to walk down a street or in certain areas. Yeah. It could, so the church, we don't, I hate to say it, but we don't rely on each other for anything. 
you know there's no leaning on each other i mean you and i we do yeah but, but there's there's other you know members of the church they don't lean on each other at all i mean that's, that's and we don't uh, keep things in the family of god right right like, like yeah if i need my tile done in my living room or in my in my in my hallway why am i not looking at the church first to see if there's somebody in the church yeah like a tile? blood will never get uh their their um plumbing done by a crypt right right yeah you know yeah I, <laughs> and when you think about drug dealers a drug dealer does not care if you have four kids does not care if you're a millionaire does not care if you had to rob somebody mm -hmm. to get the money he's going to sell you those drugs he's always going to be there for you he's always going to be the one right mm -hmm. but yet and i've seen this with my own two eyes when 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 the when the word says to come as you are not mm -hmm. stay as you are come as you are all are welcomed into your church signs that say all are welcome coming on, on churches I've seen it with my own two eyes where somebody will come in drunk and maybe they'll be a little loud in the back. They're not screaming and yelling like a maniac, but they're maybe they're crying loudly. The example that I saw was the guy was crying. He was literally breaking down into a thousand pieces in the back of the room. He was drunk when he got there. He was an alcoholic and he was in the back of the room just weeping and crying. And he was literally pouring his soul out to God and two ushers picked him up and escorted him out. That's not the direction he's supposed to go in. A drug dealer mm -hmm. is not going to do that. Right? Mm -hmm. Or or we, we've all heard the stories, right? Uh, you'll see a, a young girl come into the church who's pregnant. And there's you know she doesn't have a husband. And, and the first thing everybody wants to do is start looking and going. Mm -hmm. But you don't know that she got raped and decided to keep the baby because she knows that abortion is against the Bible. Right. Or you don't know about this person who's walking in with this this load on them, but, but because they're acting differently and they didn't say hello to you on the way through the lobby that day, you're going, Ugh, what's their problem? They didn't say hello. Right. And gangs and drug dealers will never do that. It's funny. There's I mean, it's not just that. Like you think about it, there's there's women that come into the church and they're pregnant and they don't they don't have a, a husband and they're you know you know that they're right we don't know the situation but you know that they're not and we also don't know how they got brought up yeah you know yeah because there's it's so normal now like for you know to have kids without wedlock oh, yeah, or no. so normal now to have you know, sex before marriage and stuff like that. Like, like it's not even, even church going, I'm talking about church, church going people, people that go to church, you know, like let's not say every week, but probably twice a month, Yeah. you know, and they're, oh, well, I just, I just took Annie to go get some birth control. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. yep. yep. You know, or, you know whatever the, the case is and back to to seeing people in the lobby man in a in a I, I being involved in the church and being you know what was it i don't think it was assistant yeah maybe it was assistant head usher or whatever yeah. you know um the people that you, you you go up to and you ask to leave yeah but i've uh, there's people that i've had to ask to leave where i'm like man I should have never yep. asked them to leave. You know, it's like, and that's my own conviction. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's been times where... Thank God there's grace for it, right? You right. can repent and there's grace for it. And that, I think that's... But not only is there grace, but if I didn't do that, biker church might not be biker church. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because th that's an environment. I So... I didn't, we did my, like the, the guys that we, I started, um, biker church with, you know, we were on the same page as that. Like yeah. there's, I myself got kicked out of a church when I was young and looking, looking back, I actually became 
<clears throat> I actually became part of the motorcycle ministry in that group. Mm-hmm. It was one of the one of the ministries I was involved in, not the one that I'm with now. Yeah. But uh I had way back I um I was in a band and uh we played played a show and then the next day I ended up at church and um I still had like my nails done and yeah, 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 you know, yeah. back back then it was like early 90s i guess it, not maybe not early 90s but it was late yeah late 90s and um yeah i could see why they asked me to leave yeah. <laughs> but uh they also didn't know that my heart was genuine yeah you know my heart was genuine i was actually there for you know to to get fed it's funny i was at a church very first church i ever attended on a regular basis and some guys came in and they were wearing um, club patches mm-hmm. when we're done i'll tell you what club it was because it's some it's a club you know mm-hmm. and they came into this church and the head usher that was there i was serving as an usher came up to me and said keep an eye on those guys why they've never been here before and you see what it says and they were made to feel so uncomfortable they never came back nope who right like who am i who am I to say, I'm sorry, you can't be. And it goes back into the conversation we had in the first video, right? Like churches are so closed that when you're not in their loop anymore, you're out, right? Like, out. and not only are you out, you almost become public enemy number one, right? I remember hearing stories about families that were leaving uh, a church, not one somebody's going to hear this and they're going to go, oh, he's talking about, I'm not, okay? They were leaving a church and all of a sudden all these stories came out about them. Oh, they never believed this or they did that or they didn't do this or they did that. And then you you see them a year later and they're at another church and they're thriving and everything is going great. And you go, you, you have a conversation with them and none of what was being purported about these people was actually any there was no truth to it. I can honestly talk about my situation. I, I've had a time where I've left the church for uh, a specific church for, for a little while. I went to another specific church and I came back to the specific church, the other, the original church and people would come up to me and like, oh, are you, is everything okay? It's like, yeah, I left the church. I didn't leave Christ. Right. right. Or I should say Christ never left me. Right. Yeah. You know, just yeah. because you know, just because I left your this your particular church, fellowship. You know, yeah. Just, yeah, just because I left this church doesn't mean that I left God. Right. Doesn't mean that Christ isn't still working with me. Just that, that doesn't mean that I went went back to drugs or hitting the bottle again. Right. Yeah, right. Like, right. 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 It's it's like and if you were honestly, if you <laughs> and this is gonna sound crappy. But honestly, if you thought that I was going to go back to hitting the bottle or going back to drugs, you should have been on the phone. There you go. There it is. You know, you should have been on the phone or showing up to my house, you know, trying to get me out of it. Because honestly, I'm going to say this and I hope to God that somebody checks me on it. If I'm if I'm not doing it, I hope I'm the one that's that's knocking on your door. Yeah, me too. I'll I'll be right there with you. You I will. I'll put myself out there as an accountability guy the same way because that's another excuse that people will use to leave a church i wasn't there for two weeks and nobody reached out to me to find out where i was right and honestly that's another thing talking about clubs that's a number one reason why people leave is well to the top two reasons i was going through something where were the brothers where was everybody number two lack of communication yeah yeah, it'll kill it every single time. Every right? time. And again, we go back to the gangs and the drug dealers. Mm-hmm. Right? They communicate. Right. They know you. they're always available. They come, like, I hate to keep bringing it up, but a drug dealer, if you haven't been there for two days, will go looking for you to find out where you're getting your drugs yeah. from. Right? Like, yeah. And and, and the, the other thing is. Because they're relying on you for their pocket. And you know exactly and and the other thing that just insane to me not only if you leave a church all of a sudden you're like you know you're 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 an outcast you're completely ostracized but the other thing is the i'm not gossiping but help me pray for so and so 
because of X, Y, and Z. That culture of, oh man, like help me pray for tiny Tim and, and Miss Julie right. because they're having marital problems. Right. Or I hear this is going on in their house. Well, why aren't you going to their house? Yeah. Listen, if somebody came to me and said, can you help me pray for Dan and his wife? X, Y, Z is happening in their house. Fine. That's all I need to know. I don't want to know the story before it. I don't want to know the story after it. You asked me to pray about this specific thing right now. Um, you know, uh, they had a, a sewer leak and their basement's flooded with raw sewage and they don't know what to do. Fine. Let's pray about that right now, that they'll get guidance, they'll get clarity on what to do, that they'll find favor with the plumber. That, 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 that. Well, you know, the pipe broke because, right? <laughs> I don't care. Right. I do not care. And I have told people that before. Stop right there. Stop. I think the pipe broke because Dan right. has ill will towards this and that. Yeah. Or or or, or one of the kids. You know, and I got to bring this up because I, I it, it's OK. You can think this, we're talking about the way that people think, the way that people gossip about other people. It reminds me of Job. Remember in Job yeah, when yeah. the when the um the three friends come his, his buddies right yeah, his yeah, buddies yeah. come and they're all like hey Job what did you do that you messed up your life so bad right like what did you do to to like to to piss off God right you know that's none of your business <laughs> so well, yeah. well listen he didn't do anything right first of all who said I did right and it's also none of your business. To be, it, it, you want to make it your business? Go to them. Right, right. You yeah. know? Yeah. And, and yeah. Like, like, you want to make it your business and be that guy, uh, Karen? Yeah, yeah. You, know? <laughs> you shouldn't be talking to somebody else about it. You should talk to them. At least they, at least they had that far. Yeah. And listen, we're seeing it now in the news all the time, right? You've had major, big time global ministry pastors who have fallen. And major ministries that are falling apart. And you hear people in the corners going, chi, 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 mm -hmm. did you hear about what happened? to? Let's just say Carl Lentz. Okay. Everybody knows Carl Lentz cheated on his wife and he lost mm -hmm. his. Right? Okay. It's not a big secret. Do you hear about Carl Lentz? Do you hear about Carl Lentz? But how many of you actually stopped to go, you know, we should really pray for Carl Lentz. Mm -hmm. Or Carl Lentz's marriage, Carl Lentz's wife. We're praying pray for right. the whole situation. And, and, and listen, full, full transparency. His when it ministry. happened, I went to a friend of mine and I was like, oh, my God, bro, did you just hear what it just, mm -hmm. right? Like, instead of first move going, man, this just happened to Carl Lentz and his wife. I don't know his wife and I don't know his kids, but they're brothers and sisters in Christ and we need to pray for their strength and we need to pray for their. Right. And one thing we have to do also do have to understand is, is exactly that, like. When things happen like that to other people, it's happening to us as well. Right. right. Because any strike against any kind of Christianity is a strike against us. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 100%. Like, we, like, I uh, talked about it with all these clubs and ministries, and everyone wearing a patch. When they ride down the road, they're all wearing a cross. Now, mm -hmm. there's uh, probably thousands of them. There's, there's, you know, a hundred that I know of, right? There's probably thousands across the board of different clubs, Christian clubs and ministries. Mm -hmm. But there's a different doctrine in each one of them. Sure. But the fact is, is when they're riding down the road and all, all you see is a cross, it doesn't matter. Right. right. You know? Yep. If so if something happens and, and to, to any one of them, it's it still affects us. Yeah. No, a hundred percent, bro. A hundred percent. Cause it's it just trickle down effect, right? Mm -hmm. It just it's gonna land on everybody who wears a cross for any any particular reason. It's and funny right now Christians are not it's like that right now Christians I, I don't want to use the word persecuted, but right now the Christians are, are getting we're not it, very favorable. No, yeah, it's no. not very favorable. And and honestly, we're the bigots. We're the ones that that uh, you know, we, we 
we hate gays. We don't like the gays. Right. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it's yeah. not. God hates that. Right. Yeah, come yeah. on. It's, not, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just not the case. It's just not the case. And we can get into that too. Like, is it biblical? No. No, it's not biblical. It's not biblical to to live live a life that way. Um, but it is also we love each love everyone, you know. And I am not going to s- judge anybody upon their sins. You could find my sins, you know, just because you sin differently doesn't right, mean you, right. And and I, and I get that. And I love. Listen, I have family members in that community. Yeah, I right? think everybody does now. Right, and I don't hate that family member but at the same time i should love them enough to be bold enough to tell them that what they're doing is going to lead them to an eternity that they're not going to enjoy right yes i'm sorry we're going to have to have an uncomfortable conversation i'm sorry that i'm going to have to tell you that what you're doing is directly in contravention to the word of god but i love you enough to be able to have that conversation with you the same with the guy I know that's cheating on his wife. The same with the woman I know that's going out back and, and doing a line of coke off her dashboard while she's on break because she's right. Like, or the man or the woman that's sleeping with another person behind. You know? Right. Or the teens that are, that are having premarital sex. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, uh, when you said that before, I remember somebody said to me, well, you wouldn't test drive a car without driving it. And I went, are you kidding me? You've just compared the woman that you say you love <laughs> to, a to a car. Like, really, give me a friggin' break. Mm-hmm. But, but you're right when when your initial statement about how this all comes down and it covers each and every one of us because you have these people who are going to soldiers' funerals, who say they're Christians, who are protesting these soldiers' funerals because they killed innocent people, and you have people who are going to right. But when you say, oh, I'm a Christian and people have watched enough CNN or enough MSNBC to figure out that Christians do these crazy things, all of a sudden you're a Christian. You're one of those crazy people and all right, whatever they want to call you these days. And and you're a nut job and you've now lost your ability because of the bad decisions of some other people who have labeled themselves Christians. You've lost your ability to be able to minister to those people. You have to lead a life worthy of the calling and that takes us right back to the beginning of exactly what we were talking about in the other video and this video leading a life worthy of the calling that god has put on you perfect no no not even close perfect no worthy sometimes unfortunately (laughs) (laughs) i don't mean unfortunately as in like oh what was me it's i meant like if you don't feel like if you don't feel like it there's stress and a strain put on you i think you're doing it wrong yeah uh, yeah I, listen i've had some incredibly painful things happening to me because of my walk with god did god do it i no, lost a lot of friends friends especially a lot of family family yeah yeah i've been yep. looked at like oh you're one of those guys now a lot a lot lot and like you said it's like i i claim no political party right i claim no political right. party but you're lumped into one you're i'm very much lumped into one yeah. and if you you know you can you you could talk to me for about 30 seconds and figure out what side that that is but yeah honestly and it, it's mostly because of the way that i follow follow, follow the bible right because yeah. it's there's no um there is there is no left or right in the Bible. It's only the way. That's right. This and, is the way. Yep. <laughs> right now we're Jedi's. I I can definitely talk biblically about Jedi. <laughs> I can look anybody dead in the face and tell them just because I'm a Christian doesn't mean I want Trump to run for president again. I don't. <laughs> I don't want him to run again. Let's just put that out there. And it has nothing to do because five people just went, oh my God, he's a liberal. Right. Right. <coughs> Am I? Me? Hey, first of all, it's none of your business. Second of all, what does it matter if I'm if I'm giving you the gospel one way or the other? I'm not a liberal either. Right. Right. 
Right. Uh, me, it's like I just want somebody. I I I, I wish a pastor that a, a good pastor would run. Somebody that would actually politicians back in the day were religious figures, right? right? Like right. You know, and we've lost it again. We've turned something that shouldn't have been a big business into a big business, right? The Constitution of the United States is government for the people, by the people, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and then you hear someone get on television who's, you know, a speaker of the house and go, I don't answer to you people. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me. Uh, in civics class in 10th grade, I was taught that you, <laughs> you actually do because, you know, we... It's crazy. You know, I can say the same thing about doctors. Oh, my goodness. Don't get me started. <laughs> you know, there's so many people that are supposed to be working for you that we just automatically, it's like we're brainwashed. Right, right. You, you, you almost become subservient to them. Yeah. And and it's, but here same we go. Same thing with leadership. With, with ah, you got me. <laughs> you got me right there. Yep. Who said, because so many of these, I hate to use this word, pastors. Mm -hmm. twist scripture and say you know never touch god's anointed i, I we said it earlier right I, I think most of my greatest ministry comes at my dining room table and you know what happens when people get at my dining room table they ask me questions they question not only me mm. they question the bible they question god by the way it's okay to question god he doesn't mind and I take it and I give them answers, right? Where so many of these pastors and these leaders will go, who are you asking, uh, right? I went to XYZ Bible College. Right. You don't get to ask me that question. I did CCD for right. that many years. Who are, you? <laughs> who are you? And then they turn into twisting scripture. Thou shalt not question God's anointed. Thou shalt not. Right. Like, yeah, mm, that's, that's not what that means. I'm about to do a teaching in two weeks on the 23rd. At our next fellowship, the teaching that I'm planning on doing that God has really put on my heart is the promises that we claim in the Bible that aren't for us. <laughs> About half of the book. Bill. These, yeah. <laughs> these, these cute stickers and shirts and magnets that we wear that have nothing to do with modern day Christianity. Jeremiah 29, 11 is not for us. But yet it's on. I had a wallet that had Jeremiah 29, 11 stamped on it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not even a promise for me. It's not intended for me. It's not intended for you or any other modern Christian. None of us are going to Babylon to be persecuted, right? Like, but but these leaders and pastors that we feel like, well, he went to Bible college. He's the one that founded this church. He's the only voice we hear from that pulpit every week. I need to do exactly what he says or I'm going to hell. Right, right. Uh, well, you know, I need to take this message and bring it to my pastor or i need to go i have i have to get prayed for by the pastor because he's got a direct link to god he's got god's cell phone number right and yep. he it's it's gonna or the god he knows god's pager number and right. it says 911 at the end yep. like <laughs> you know? yeah yep. yeah i see it all the time with people when they come up to prayer lines so remember the prayer lines, prayer circles. Yeah, prayer, and, those, it's a prayer tunnel. The fire yes. tunnel, and yes. and and they'll you they'll, you'll go like this as an usher, like come over here and pray with this person. They'll go, I'm waiting for the pastor. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Why? Yep. Why? Why? Mm -hmm. Oh well, he's the only one that understands, or he's he's the only one that. Mm -hmm. You know how many people I actually pissed off yesterday? Really? There's actually two people that came up to me and said, I completely disagree with what you said. Really? Wow. All right, okay. Well, that's that's fine. <laughs> you can disagree with the Bible all you want. Right? <laughs> I had somebody who used to curse in front of me all the time. And I always said to them, listen. Me? No. Okay. I always said to them, if you want to use foul language, use foul language. If you're okay cursing in front of me, just know you're also cursing in front of God. But do not ever use God's name when you're doing it. Right. And there was one time recently, somebody that I work with, somebody recently is my blah, 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 and he went, 
I'm so sorry, bro. No, he didn't care about the mother Fs and the other thing, right? Like, yeah. but there's certain lines. At least, and listen, I, I'm guilty of that. That's one thing that I'm, uh, I'll, not even one thing. There's a million things I'm guilty <laughs> of. But that's one thing that I, that I, um, I'm working on. I have been working on. But one thing that, that I, like getting the, the GD out. Yeah. Taking the GD out and taking yeah. like, and sometimes that's not even the actual, you know, when, when God said, um, don't use my name in vain. It wasn't exactly that. Did you hear, you didn't, you weren't here. Well, the last fellowship, I spent two hours talking. Oh, that. well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, so that's another thing. But yeah, cleaning up my mouth. I'm a truck driver from New Jersey. It's going to take me some time, but also know like it is something that I'm working on. Well, and if you have a conviction about it, I got to work on it even more. But but if you have a <laughs> conviction about it, that's a clear indication that God has taken up residence in you. Right. 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 If you didn't care, like you and I both know people that have been saved, uh, saved for 10 years and Every bad habit they had before, 10 years later, they still have it. Every right. single one of them. You know, I, 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 I can talk about me. I know me, right? When I first got saved, I was drinking like a fish, smoking at least two packs a day, cursing like it was my job, mm -hmm. and doing things that were questionable, underhanded, okay. right? Did all of it go away right away? Mm -mm. No. No, and that's again, that's a big part of my testimony. I had to fall down a couple of times before I got back up. Right. And uh but back to let's let's just yeah, yeah, yeah. back to uh the the mouth talking a certain way. I'd be lying to you. I'd be lying to you if I didn't feel that God sometimes used used it to his benefit use the way that I spoke in his benefit because in the ministry that I was in, that I am in, there's, you have to reach them at a certain level. I had, yeah, it's, yeah. and it's not like I would like, so I, you're going to an area, right? You go into an area, you see you're going to to, to Mexico. You got to speak Spanish. You know? Yeah. And I'm not saying that I went there and cursed my head. Right, right, right. And you're not using it as a defense. Huh? I'm, also, right. I'm also not using it as a defense. I'm also not saying that I was, was cursing at all. Right. right. But, but I carry myself a certain way. Sure. Sure. And because because of that. You know, you carry yourself a certain way and you handle yourself in a certain way yeah. in the situation you're in. Sure. And, and we talked about it before, right? What I mean is, sorry, yeah. is because they see me struggling, holding back, they know that, okay, you're, he's human. You're a real human being. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But God can use all things to make it to work together for the good of those who believe and trust in him. Right. Right. Even our mistakes. Mm -hmm. Even our mistakes. Yeah. You know, I recently was ministering to a brother who made a mistake in his marriage. He made a mistake. His wife was heartbroken. He was heartbroken. But they've taken that mistake. And turned it into not only completely reversing and strengthening their marriage, but their ability now as a couple to be able to minister to other couples who are going through a similar situation. That's awesome. Right? Was it, am I encouraging people to go out no. to do that? To, right? I'm, I'm not encouraging you to go out and make a mistake no. in your marriage just to be able to come back and go, all right, listen, I did this so we could minister to people. <laughs> that, 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 that's not what i'm saying because the propon the, the the great number of times that something like that happens it does not work out like that mm -hmm. but it did and god used it and now they're using it 
to help other people. I talked about my arm, what happened to my arm, right? Right. I have now met so many people who have similar situations with their, their joints. Probably knew them the entire time, but now because they talk about what has happened to me, they open up and go, dude, I've had X, Y, Z happen to me and it opens a door. Right. So, okay. Maybe occasionally a four little word slips out when you're in an environment, but is it opening a door? That's the question. Well, it's not even just, it's not, what I, what I said was probably not exactly, I probably didn't say it correctly. It's not using the four little words. It's showing the struggle. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I you know it's, it's using you. you I, I feel like somebody, somebody can, can, identify with this i feel like there's somebody that's listening that, that's listening that can break it down break it down yeah. is um somebody has something going on that they feel like oh my god i have this going on and i can't go any further right. or i can't help anybody because i got this going on and i'm going to tell you this there's things that i've struggled with that I've used, that I struggled with and broke eventually that I've used to minister to people. Mm. Yeah. You know, and there's things I, that God's going to, what I'm saying is God's going to take that thing that you're struggling with. And you see it a lot with addiction. Mm -hmm. People that are addicted, same thing as, as we're talking about curse words, but yeah, the yeah. Same, people that are addicted, they, there's a lot of falling down and getting back up there's like i don't know one person that, that has been freed of drugs that didn't fall down and get back up so don't think just because you're struggling with somebody that you're not going to be a benefit to somebody else right. yeah that's just good. just because you're struggling with it now it's like no help that person that you think you you can help get yourself the help that you need know that you're you're not perfect. There was only one man that ever walked this earth that was perfect. I mean, listen, we have biblical examples, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, Noah got drunk. Yeah. Right. Moses was a stutterer. Murderer. Um, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, 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 um, uh, oh, my goodness. David was a murderer and an adulterer. Yeah. Right. Um, Peter. Man after his own heart, by the way. Right. Right. Peter. Mm -hmm. denied christ openly Free right time. um so so don't tell me that just because you've made a mistake or just because something's happened or you've fallen down that you can't then be restored and used mightily yeah but not just that but use you while you're in still it. in it in it yeah yeah use you while you're still in it because you have faith through the storm right you know yep yeah, like, well, right, you're oh, like right God. now as you're struggling, you can be achieving the Great Commission. Uh, it, right away, as we're talking about this, I'm thinking of Rahab the harlot. Right? She was Rahab the harlot. Mm. That was her. That, everybody knew that that's who she would get. She helped the spies escape to further the kingdom while she was still Rahab the harlot. Mm -hmm. Right? It's a great example of it. She was in the middle of her sin. I'm, uh, there's, there's, uh, allegedly, there's been times when I was first struggling. There was times where I would close the bar the night before and show up at church on Sunday in my sunglasses. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There was times where there was people that were sitting in the bar stool next to me that actually came to that church. Yeah. So, and they're doing bigger things than I, I could even imagine. Doing. Yeah. You know? Yep. There's people that drugged me while I was sitting in a bar and drugged me out, you know? So it's like a give and a take, you know, you, you can... As much as you can get help through your storm, you can still help. Yeah. Nobody is beyond use. Right. 
there's different vessels, right? We, we, there's biblical stories of clay vessels and silver vessels and gold vessels. There's different vessels. They all hold something. And they all have a different use. They all have a different purpose. So nobody is so damaged or so beyond that they can't be used for something. And and just think about the other side of that. I, you know, you know, I, when you're talking about vessels, you're talking about well, vessels, what? A container, right? Yeah. Mostly. Yeah. Well, you don't want to pour gasoline into a plastic mm -hmm. Or into a, 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 you know, yeah, we yeah. into certain vessels. Right. Certain put, different... put gas in styrofoam and see what happens. Right. Yeah. 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 Yep. Uh, uh, you wouldn't want the pizza guy to show up at your house with a pizza. Mm -hmm. You want it in a box. Right. Right. What, you don't want him holding your pizza. Go here. You go and slide it off his hands into your hands. Right. right. It needs a vessel. It needs needs something to hold it in. Yeah. It needs a vessel. Duh. By the way, for a second there, I looked at you like, no, I want them to bring the pizza. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the best part is, we want that. What's a pizza now? Fourteen ninety nine. Oh my gosh. We want that fourteen ninety nine pizza. But if it doesn't come in the twenty five cent box, it's worthless. Yeah. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. It's a twenty five cent box that holds something exponentially more important or more expensive inside of it. But we won't take what's inside of it unless it comes in that twenty-five yeah. cent box. Yeah, I don't want to hold this coffee in my hands. <laughs> I tried it. I tried it once. Yeah, <laughs> how'd that work out for you? Oh yeah, yeah. So listen, it's been a great conversation. I love this. We can go on and on and on and yep. on all day, but we're gonna have to cut it off. So what I want you to do, I want you to pray. I want you to pray us out. We're not praying for people to get. This we're not going to say the magic prayer. Right. We're not. We're not doing the magic prayer. But what we are going to do is pray for people, and pray that the message okay. is received. And so, go ahead. I'm not. I'm going to shut up. It's hard for both of us. I know. It really yeah. is. <laughs> Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the time that we got to spend with each other and fellowshipping. Thank you for the people that are that are listening. Father, we thank you for the things that you're doing in, in our lives. The, we thank you for our health and our abilities to, to be here. We, we thank you that you're watching over the people that are out there. Father, we ask for divine interventions yes. for, for us, for the people out there. We ask for the wisdom to identify them. And we also pray, we give us the guts to be the divine intervention for others. Give us the ability to do it the way that you you want us to do it, yes. Father. Give us the the wisdom. Give us your wisdom to have the speech yeah. that you that you want us to give to others. Thank you. In Jesus, God, in Jesus, in Jesus, holy name, Amen. Make me the best 25 cent vessel ever. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Thanks for being with me. I really appreciate it. It's been great conversations, and I'm glad we finally got our schedules worked out. So we yeah, I'd like to do this again. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure they would love to see you again, too. We'll so see about that. We'll see you guys soon. <laughs> um, look for more coffee with the guys. We're back. Yeah. We're coming back with even more, and we're super excited. So if you need us for anything, it's info at livingx29.com or jamie at livingx 29com Do you have an email or anything you want to share? Um, well, you can look for me at uh, Average Christian Biker on YouTube, but you also look, look for me at uh, Average Christian Biker at gmail.com. That's how you can reach me. There you go. And we're not afraid of questions. So no. bring it on. And the last thing I always end this way, because it's just it's such a burden on my heart all the time. If you need a Bible, if you don't have a Bible, you can't afford a Bible, you want a Bible, you never owned a Bible before, and you really think you want to reach out. Again, it's Jamie at livingactsacts29.com, and I'll be more than happy to make sure you get a Bible in your hand. We're not going to send you some, some cheap paper, little stupid Bible. We're going to send you a nice Bible, something that you'll be able to hold on to and cherish in the Lord for the rest of your walk until you get a, until you get the victory. Yeah, you know, Bibles used to be a thing. Remember, yeah. Um, it's fun. It, talk. I just some some people they're like, oh, I got this little Bible and it's all paper and it's this, this, and that. But 
talking about the way the country used to be, yeah. one family used to have one, one Bible. The whole Bible, your family Bible. They used yeah. to actually write yeah. their um, genealogy, yeah, yeah everything. Yeah. So it's it's pretty <laughs> awesome to receive like a good quality Bible that you can go to and, go yeah. and, and use. One of my most treasured possessions as a human being is a Bible that someone gave me as a gift. They thought enough of me to give me a Bible. Yeah. And it's literally one of my most treasured possessions. I took it to Bible college with me. When I minister, I generally minister out of this Bible. And and it's it's I I, I love the fact that this came to me in the way it came to me. And it's it's one of my most treasured possessions. Me too. I have one one specific Bible that was given to me in the beginning of my walk towards leadership, I guess. Yeah. Um that I use like a lot that yeah. I always that I should I shouldn't say always but a good portion of the time I, I'll crack that one open and I know that it's that it's there you know yeah yeah it's awesome Dan thanks again we'll see you guys soon don't forget Biker Church New Jersey yeah you can find us on Facebook as well awesome uh, Biker Church uh, and find out what dates we have it it's once a month look at ready I'm gonna put this in front of the screen let's see if they can see it and screenshot it if you can can it count is it coming out that's their is upcoming it, calendar is it backwards is it backwards well they'll figure it out they're, they're big people you think yeah they'll figure it out if you need it we got them here we can get you the information thank you for joining us thanks for giving us some of your time may the lord continue to richly bless each and every one of you we love you bye-bye take care god bless